coming to you live with all the sports action from around the UP. Welcome to Friday, Friday Night, Night Frenzy. Frenzy. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Friday Night Frenzy. I'm Jerry Taylor. The Diamond Jubilee Trophy was on the line tonight between two Marquette County rivals, and both teams just happened to be ranked in the UPSSA Big Five poll. The fifth-ranked Marquette Redmen battled the number three Miners in Nagani. First quarter, the Redmen with the ball and on the move, but not for long. Quarterback Brett Place would be sacked on the play by Austin Kaya in the backfield and Marquette would have to pump the ball. Nagani would move right down the field and on second and goal, Tyler LaJoyce sprints up the gut for six and the Miners led just like that, six nothing. On the next drive for the Redmen, Place off the pump fake would air it out deep downfield where Kurt Burmeister likes to hang out. He hauls it in, a big game for Marquette. First and goal from inside the five. The next play for the Redmen, Paul Smith gets his number called and number 42 would fight his way in for six. Extra point good, Marquette led 7-6. After that touchdown, Nagani took over the game as LaJoy finds the end zone again. He had four touchdowns in this one and the Diamond Jubilee Trophy has a new home for the first time in three years, or I should say four years, as the Miners win big 38-14 over Marquette. To the scoreboards, Escanaba had no problem at Iron Mountain. The Eskimos win it 34-14. Norway shut out Gwyn at home 34-0. West Iron County is now 8-0. Oh, yes, the Wycons, good for them. After a 35-6 win at home over Hancock, the Wycons are one of a handful of teams still undefeated in the UP. Lantz went to Northland Pines and won the game at 35-13. The Purple Hornets are 7-1. Back to the goods we go. Kingsford and Gladstone battled in a GNC conference matchup. The first drive of the ball game for the Flivers was a good one, and I guarantee you it was. Jake Allen follows his blockers to the promised land from seven yards out for the touchdown. Extra point good. That made it 7-0 Kingsford. After a Gladstone punt, the Flivers got the ball back. The Braves would watch Tyler Roberts go flying up the middle. And Roberts would have reservations for six. Just like that, Kingsford was on top two scores. But the Braves would answer on their next possession. Tyler Wells, through the rain and wind, would chuck it way downfield. And Jake Peterson lays out for the ball, and he would make a spectacular diving catch. And suddenly, Gladstone was in business. After a touchdown run by Wells, the Braves would go for two, and they would get it. As Jared Hunter on the reception there from Wells, Gladstone trailed though 14-8. But Kingsford would score another long TD here thanks to a big play by Bodie Sunquist. The Flivers are now 6-2 and, and postseason bound. They win it tonight over the Braves. Lakeland and Hubble needed a big win in a big way tonight, and they got it. 16-8 at North Dickinson. The Lakes kept their postseason hopes alive in the process. Speaking of postseason hopes, Houghton is now 5-3 after defeating Barriga. Forest Park's Lee Graff had a, well, average night for him. 24 carries, 166 yards, and four scores as the Trojans defeat the Gogebic Miners. In Wisconsin, it was Hurley 55, Ontonagon 12. Back to the highlights, Manistique and West would play a wild one tonight in West Ishpeming. The Emeralds led 28-7 at the half, but West would make a comeback. Trevor Burke throws it over the middle to Luke Duquette, who catches the ball, and Duquette was off to the races. Tyler Kangas would track him down at the one, gain a 78 on the play. On first and goal, Brandon Benda would muscle his way in for the score. The Patriots were down just 28-26, and they would go for two. Here's the two-point conversion. Benda gets his number called again, and yes, he's in, and suddenly it was 28-7, now 28-28, a tie ball game. Under four minutes to go, Manistique driving. Kangas on the five-step drop finds Cole Putman open downfield for the catch and a first down. Manistique couldn't score on that drive, but the game would go to overtime, and Manistique would win it 35-34 for their first win of the season. Congrats to the Emeralds. Well, Ishpeming is 8-0 after defeating Newberry at Newberry this evening, 46-7. Calumet won at home over Ironwood, 26-14 for their first win of the season. Munising is now 5-3 after defeating Stevenson 17-8. The Mustangs got all of their points from Eddie Cooper. He had four catches for 120 yards, two touchdowns, and a 25-yard field goal. That's what they call getting it done. Munising must win at home next week against Slants to secure a playoff berth. That should be a good game, 5-3 Munising against 7-1 Lantz. 
We have reached halftime on this edition of the Frenzy, but we still have plenty more to get to, including highlights from the ice as Northern Michigan played their first home game of the season against a non-conference opponent. That's next on the Frenzy. We'll be here right back. Welcome back to the Frenzy. After a tough opening weekend series in Madison against Wisconsin, the Northern Michigan University hockey team played their first home game of the season. The Wildcats in their brand new sharp looking jerseys took on the Nebraska Omaha Mavericks at the Berry. Wildcats goalie Matias Dahlstrom was tested early in this one. Off the enemy turnover, Dahlstrom stopped not one but two point blank attempts by the Mavs to keep the game scoreless. After one, let's go to the second. The Mavericks on a four on three power play. Ryan Dotry picks off the pass and he was off to the races with a breakaway, but Mavs goalie Kirk Thompson would make the save and that kept the Wildcats off the scoreboard on that same power play. Michael Young gives up the puck to Ryan Walters, a Hopi Baker contender, and he beats Dahlstrom upstairs for the power play goal and UNO led one nothing. Later in the period, the Wildcats enjoyed a five-on-three man advantage. Ooh, what a nice pass from Justin Rose. That is Stefan Vijay, who goes upstairs, top shelf for the goal. His second of the year tied the game at one. But Nebraska Omaha would score the game winner with under five minutes to go in the third, and they win it tonight, 2-1 over the Wildcats. On to the WCHA scoreboards. Michigan Tech loses tonight 3-2 at Notre Dame. They will try again tomorrow for their first win of the season. In other WCHA action, it was Lake State in a wild one in Union, 6-5. Colgate and Bowling Green tied 1-1. Minnesota, Minnesota, I should say, defeated Bemidji State, 6-3. Minnesota State just gets by Connecticut, 2-1. Western Michigan is up big at Alaska Anchorage, 6-1. And Denver and Alaska just getting started. Over at the Lakeview Arena tonight in the battle of the top two teams in the Great Lakes Conference as far as junior hockey goes, Marquette wins big over the Ileana Blackbird 7-3. Dallas McLaughlin with two goals for the Royals. Marquette scored three goals in the second and third periods to get the W. Good start to the weekend for them. Let's change gears a bit. The NMU women's cross country team had their only homie of the season earlier today at the NMU golf course. The women's race was four kilometers. On an afternoon where the weather was just terrible, the Lady Wildcats dominated the competition. Megan Edick and Mary-Kate Sorelli would virtually cross the finish line at the same time for the Cats at 14 minutes, 41 seconds, followed by Christina Toogood in third, Jordan Ross in fourth, and Larissa Halenen in fifth, all Wildcats. The Lady Wildcats finished with a perfect score of 15 points. Michigan Tech finished in second with 54, and Lake State in third, with 72. The men's race was a little longer than the women's race as the men ran six kilometers. All 51 runners sprinted out of the gates trying to get out in front and stay out in front. That's key when you run. As they would come through the woods about halfway through the race, a small group of runners had separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Now Tom Scott would win the men's race in 15 minutes, 27 seconds. Ben Dooling of Lake State was second at the 15 minute 40 second mark. Michigan Tech's Daniel Coolis, a Kingsford alum, finished in sixth place with a time of 16 minutes, 31 seconds. To the team results, Lake State won the UP Men's Championship with just 22 points, followed by Michigan Tech in second, and go give it Community College in third. In GLIAC volleyball action, Northern Michigan wins tonight at Ohio Dominican in three sets, while the Lady Huskies fall at Tiffin 3-1.